Hello everyone, I am Rob the Robot from the Adobe Education team and I would like to welcome you to the Inject Creativity Live Show. This is an online show for educators interested in digital creativity. This show is live on the Adobe for Education YouTube channel as well as other social media and past recordings can be viewed via bit.ly slash adobe dash inject. Any teacher, whether an Adobe user or not, in any K-12 or higher education sector and any subject area, is welcome. Here are your hosts, Dr. Tim Kitchen and Erin Wraithke. Thanks, Rob, and welcome to the Inject Creativity Live Show, the online show aimed to inspire educators to enhance digital literacy, communication, and creativity skills for themselves and for their students. Welcome, Erin. Hi, Tim, and a special welcome to everyone who's joined us live on Wednesday, the 2nd of June, 2021, using the Adobe for Education YouTube channel, as well as the Australasian Adobe and Education Facebook group. We encourage you all to say hi in the chat and let us know where you are from and where you teach. While you're in the chat sharing a bit about yourself, we'd like to do an acknowledgement of country. We respect and honour Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander elders, past, present and future, as well as all Indigenous people from the lands we reach out to during this event. We acknowledge their stories, traditions and living cultures. We acknowledge them as the first peoples in our lands, the first scientists and the first creatives, and we commit to building a brighter future together. Well, Erin, during this event, Adobe Education Leader Dr Max Sleasure from Swinburne University in Melbourne will be with us. We're also very privileged to have Clara Galan join us. So she is Adobe's global education community lead for K-12 and higher education. Unfortunately, Paul McLean from New Zealand is not well, so he can't be joining us as planned, but we're gonna have a good time anyway. It's gonna be a great episode and your contributions in the chat are welcome throughout the show. Before we hear from our guests, let's see who has joined us live for the show so far and has said hi in the chat. And we've got, let's see, John has joined us. G'day, John, all the way from Toowoomba in Queensland. He's saying good evening, everyone. Glad to see you. I hope our Melbourne friends are all okay. I forgot, Erin, I should be wearing a mask, shouldn't I? Oh. <laughs> Is that better? Yeah. Yes, I don't have mine handy, but I'm not going to rub that in too much, Tim. No, and while Tim, Tim checks out the chat and his mask location, um, note that we're getting the chat feed from those of you on Facebook, LinkedIn and YouTube, but not always from Twitter. So if you're joining us from Twitter and you'd like your comments, questions and your answer to the coming quiz question posted and published by us during the chat show, you may want to jump out of Twitter and into the Adobe for Education YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash Adobe. Adobe for Education. Speaking of people from Queensland, Trevor, uh, now I always get his name, surname wrong, Melivsky. <laughs> I probably got that mucked up. But Trevor from Marba, Mar Maraba in far north Queensland, uh, he says good evening to everyone. And it's always, always good to have you involved with us, Trevor. Oh, look who's with us as well, all the way from Canada, from Toronto. He's saying hi, everyone. It's Tim Cosgrove. Tim, commiserations on the lockdown. Well, mate, you've been in lockdown since forever. Yeah. We've only just had one week and going through another week, so nothing compared to you. But it's lovely to have you with us as well. And John is saying hi to Timothy and hopes that you are well as too. So it's really great to have our regulars with us. And if you're yeah. joining us for the first time, we'd love to hear from you as well. Mm -hmm. Great bunch of regulars that we have in here in this chat. And um, well, we're no just. More comments. Yeah, <laughs> so here is a little bit of pause. Let's hear from Rob the Robot. You're watching Inject Creativity Live with Tim Kitchen and Erin Raithke. Trying to get John's. There we go. We've got rid of that. Uh, oh, we're ready to move on. Erin, the state of Victoria in Australia, as we've just sort of mentioned, this is where I live, is in the middle of their fourth lockdown due to a number of locally transmitted COVID 19 cases. 
So Victoria's had about 90 days of no locally transmitted cases before having to lock down again. And now teachers in Victoria have had to revert back to online teaching. And this shows us all how vulnerable we are and just how important it is to keep up to date with digital tools so that we can effectively go through the learning and teaching process when not face to face with our students. So the free distance learning resources and project ideas site on the Adobe Education Exchange is a great resource to keep bookmarked and to share with your colleagues. It involves K-12 and higher ed lessons and projects that make distance learning and blended learning engaging. There are links to Adobe and Khan Academy resources, tips on how to go paperless, as well as a variety of courses, articles and blogs to help with distance teaching and learning. Get involved with the free distance learning resources and project ideas site on the Adobe Education Exchange. We hope you're enjoying this episode of Inject Creativity Live with Tim Kitchen and Erin Raithke. Thanks, Rob. Now let's welcome our good friend and the Inject Creativity Live moderator and techie whiz, Jerry Wong. Hi, Jerry. <laughs> Hi, Hi, everyone. Jerry. Welcome. I'll be looking out for your comments and questions in the chat and posting the most relevant ones. Now, to encourage you to use the live chat, I have an Adobe-related quiz question for you. Ooh. What does the DC stand for in Acrobat DC? There you go. That shouldn't be too hard to answer. I know Erin, this one. She knows this one. She's not going to tell us the answer. I didn't even have to cheat. I knew this one. <laughs> well, we're getting... We're getting a, a bit of a response in the comment. There's always a, a slight delay here. People are still saying hello to each other. Um, mm -hmm. I'm just going to hold off from playing, showing those publicly until we get a response to the question. And Tim Cosgrove, all the way from Canada, has got it. Oh, he's answered many questions correctly, and I don't have my sound effects set up, so I can't give you a round of applause, <laughs> but we'll give you a virtual round of applause. Well done, Document Cloud, of course. That's what the DC stands for. And what people may not know, and John is also answering correctly. Well done, John. And what um, people may not be aware is that Adobe have three different clouds or three different parts of their organization. The creative cloud, which is what we talk about all the time. Mm -hmm. The document cloud, which has direct connection with the creative cloud because of Adobe Acrobat, which is in both. Uh, and then there's the experience cloud, which is all about our marketing and our analytics side of the business, which we don't really talk about in this particular show. But there's connections between all three. And of course, Jerry, document cloud. For teachers and students out there, one of the great things about the document cloud is the Adobe Sign feature within it. Jerry, I know this is off script and I know you're not prepared for this, but what would be an advantage of having your school set up with Adobe Sign? Well, you can get things approved and signed a lot quicker. Mm -hmm. You don't have to print anything. Just do it straight off your phone, mobile device, or just a, a website. Yeah. I loved it when my daughter's school had it and I'd get a, a permission and suddenly a notification on my phone and, and suddenly it was there and I'd just quickly say, yes, she can go on that excursion. I'd quickly sign it and bang, yeah. it was all done. It's just so yeah. efficient. And it'd be good for the teachers too, no pulling crumpled permission slips out of bags and trying to smooth them out. And there's 20 slips that take up that much space in a, a folder. That would be so much easier to manage. Oh, it is. If, when I was a year 10 coordinator, it would have been fabulous not to have so much paper to run <laughs> running camps and excursions. And of course, uh, when I was a, a head of department too at a school, just constantly wanting to to deal with signatures all the time. It's such a handy resource to have. So look into it, look into the Adobe Document Cloud and just see if that's going to be relevant for you and your students. All right, we've got a few more comments here. Greta has come in and she said, hi, all first timer, hmm? first timer to inject creativity. So a very double hi. welcome. If I had my sound effects ready, I would give you a big round of applause. <laughs> Welcome, Greta. And John saying a big welcome to you. So it's great to have you on board, especially as a first timer. All right, let's hear from Rob the Robot again. You're watching Inject Creativity Live with Tim Kitchen and Erin Raithke. Thanks, Rob. Let's welcome our guests for this episode. Max, welcome to the show. For those who haven't met you before, tell us how long you have been an Adobe Education Leader for and where you teach and what you do. I've been at Adobe Education Leader since 2017, and I'm a senior lecturer in film and TV at Swinburne University of Technology. Swinburne and University of 
the technology. Yeah. yeah, go on. And I teach um, experimental screen production and digital narratives. And I'll talk a little bit about this today as well. Oh, that's fantastic. And Max, you're a very much valued member of our leadership community. And every time you present, we get lots of great comments and feedback from your sessions. Now, Max, Swinburne University is Adobe's first creative campus for the Southern Hemisphere. We've got about 24 of them in the Northern Hemisphere, but only one in the Southern Hemisphere, and that's your university. Tell us, Max, what's it been like uh, working at Swinburne since you've become an Adobe Creative Campus? Have you noticed any differences? Yeah, it's really fantastic because now I can really like make use to of all the Adobe products to the full extent, so like the Adobe software, as I mean, but also things like Adobe Creative Cloud, which I think has become a really useful tool, especially when we were in, I mean, we've been locked on again now, but like last year when we were in lockdown, we could jump into things like um, Premiere Teams, which was a bit rushed for us, but we had to do some editing. We were all at home, but that means we could just all upload our content, our assets to Adobe Creative Cloud and use Adobe Premiere Teams to edit. And also when we deliver some projects, it's no longer like, you know, sending any kind of, you know, whatever online services. We just use Adobe Creative Cloud and that works in a, you know, in a really nice way. And then, of course, students have access to, um, you know, all the Adobe products that they can go and explore. And we also have some Adobe coaches in the library so that if the students need some more additional help, they can check in with them. And yeah, it's just um, fantastic. It has been amazing. And of course, being in the film and television faculty, you have been using Adobe products for a long time because they've been you know, an essential part of what you teach. But to have the Creative Cloud apps available to every teacher in every faculty and every student in every faculty, mm. at university, that is just awesome. And I'm so privileged to only be living literally 15 minutes away from the university and being able to have that contact with, uh, with the university and just see the way that Creative Cloud has really lifted the digital literacy of virtually everyone at the university. And now you're inspiring other universities to consider going that extra mile as well. So it's fantastic. Yes, one, one great example, just to jump into this, like the other day I was running a workshop for all the HDR students at Swinburne University. So all the research students that do PhDs, um, not only from uh, the, the creative arts, but from the entire university to really make them think about how they can, when they do their research project, not also publish, but also like use video, use Adobe Rush, for instance, um, to create a short video about their projects for, especially for the thesis competition. So I think it's like, yeah, really great to see that, um, you know, everyone is really into this. That's great. Fantastic, thank you. Thank you. So amazing. And so we're going to welcome Max, but Clara, it is welcome. It is wonderful to welcome you back yeah. and have you back again, um, all the way from Barcelona, Spain, where your Wednesday is just starting. So could you please share with us a little about your role at Adobe? Absolutely. So it's wonderful to see some familiar faces in the chat. Um, that also join us for the other live stream shows. And it's great to meet um, those of you who are new to the Inject Creativity Live. Um, I'm Clara, I manage our educator community programs here on the Adobe for Education team. I'm originally from San Francisco and, and worked with the Adobe team there and have since moved uh, to Barcelona in Spain. And John saying, hola to you, Clara. <laughs> hey, John. Hola. <laughs> And uh, Bronwyn from Macquarie University in, in New South Wales saying, fantastic to see a university supporting digital literacies for all students. Thank you, Bronwyn. Mm. Happy with us. And <laughs> more Ola. So maybe I'll just press the wrong button there. And Bronwyn saying hi to Clara as well. There you go. Great to see you again. It's good to have that community. Now, uh, Max, tell us what you'll be sharing with us during this episode. Today, I'll talk a bit about um, using AR, Adobe uh, Aero for augmented reality. And then if you've got a bit of time, I'll also show you how you can use Premiere Pro to create 360 videos, even if you don't have access to a 360 video camera. Um, but if I don't get to the second part, all my resources will be on the Adobe Education Exchange, so no worries. And um, we've done this this semester in an interfaculty, inter this, sorry, interdepartment collaboration. So working with some students from creative writing and illustration. And yeah, so that should be. That's it. Fantastic. We'll make sure we grab those links from you later on to share in the fireside chat, Max. And um, Clara, what will you be sharing with us this evening? 
So we have some exciting summer professional development opportunities coming up from the Adobe for Education team, including our Worldwide um, Education Summit, which will be taking place in the end of July. So I'll share some sneak peeks about who are some of our featured speakers during that summit and how you can register uh, to join us this summer. Wonderful. And she's saying, hi, Clara. Great to see you again. And John is saying, please, Max, get to that second part. You're going to have to walk through <laughs> okay. the first part to make sure John is really pleased with that. Folks, thank you so much. We really look forward to your sessions and we'll be hearing from you very soon. We hope you're enjoying this episode of Inject Creativity Live with Tim Kitchen and Erin Raifke. The May edition of the Australasian Adobe in Education update is now available to view via bit.ly slash adobe-edu-may21. This edition has information about Adobe's new partnership with the Khan Academy, the launch of the 2021 APAC Adobe Education Summit, new resources on the Adobe Education Exchange, a new Adobe Creative Jam opportunity, and lots more. Here's Tim's May update video. Hi folks and welcome to the May 2021 edition of the Australasian Adobe in Education Update. In this edition, we celebrate Adobe's new partnership with the Khan Academy. This includes a new course on the Adobe Education Exchange about teaching creativity, as well as curriculum resources for the teaching of humanities, storytelling, science and mathematics. We launched the 2021 APAC Adobe Education Summit in this edition. The summit will be happening during the September holidays. We announce a new creative jam opportunity for higher ed students in Australia, in New Zealand, Canada and the USA, as well as lots of other opportunities to learn more about how to engage your students with the help of Adobe's amazing digital creativity tools. Make sure you look through this May 2021 edition of the update for more information and please contact us if you'd like support on how to implement your Adobe tools. Keep promoting the ACE, Adobe Creative Educator Program with your peers and register for one of the monthly Be A Creative Educator courses if you'd like some support getting your ACE Level 1 badge. Enjoy this May 2021 update and don't forget to Keep being creative. And as featured in the May update, Adobe have recently launched a major partnership between Adobe and the Khan Academy. The Khan Academy is a non-for-profit educational ed organization created in 2006 by Sal Khan with the goal of creating a set of online tools that help educate students. Originally focused on the teaching of mathematics, now with over 120 million registered users, the Khan Academy provides resources for a wide variety of curriculum areas. The goal of this partnership is to support the development of a new free online learning resources that foster creative and critical thinking skills, helping all students reach their potential and ultimately be pre better prepared for the future. The partnership includes a new course on the Adobe Education Exchange called Teach Creativity with Adobe and Khan Academy, as well as a series of teaching resources. Look up bit.ly slash adobe dash Khan dash course 21 for more information. The aim of the new course and the teaching resources is to help teachers learn how to use creative activities and projects to drive student engagement, deepen their learning and set them up for future success. Uh, do we have time for the clip, Tim? We certainly do. Millions of students and educators worldwide have used Khan Academy to learn and practice core academic content across subjects. Adobe, meanwhile, is the leader in tools and curriculum that allows students to practice creativity, communication, and digital skills. We're so excited to bring these two organizations together with a new, easy to use, adaptable, and innovative curriculum. In this new self-paced course for educators, Teach Creativity with Adobe and Khan Academy, we'll introduce you to over 100 lessons, activities, and projects that combine Khan Academy content with creative extensions using Adobe tools. You'll dive deep into pedagogy and instructional design, 
Hear from real educators across K-12 and higher ed. It's a beautiful blend of informative and engaging content who have transformed their students' learning outcomes with these innovative approaches. Plus, with an end-of-course assignment, you'll have the option to receive a digital credential and certificate for professional development hours. So, whether you want to teach literature, science, history, and social sciences, art history, math, or storytelling with Pixar in a box, this free course will teach you to weave core content and creative projects in flexible, exciting, and engaging ways. Sign up today on the Adobe Education Exchange. We hope you're enjoying this episode of Inject Creativity Live with Tim Kitchen and Erin Raithke. Oh, you saw that little sneak of Clara appearing there on the screen, and it's always a pleasure to have Clara join us. For those of you who don't know, Clara has a YouTube show that she hosts with North American Adobe Education Evangelist Tanya Averith called the Adobe Creative Educator Livestream Show. You can look back at her show via the Adobe for Education Facebook site, www.facebook.com slash Adobe for Education. Clara. How are you going? Doing pretty well. well summer is coming in Barcelona, so it's warm and getting ready for summer. Good, good. And tell us a little bit more about uh, the show that you do every every second week, is it? Every week. So we mm -hmm. are live on Adobe for Education, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter on Thursdays at 10.30 a.m. Pacific time. Now, I know that's a, in the middle of the night for um, many Australian educators and those who are joining us in APAC. So we it's automatically recorded just like this live stream show. So you can access it at any time on our Facebook channel and also participate in the chat. So you'll see all of the comments from previous educators that joined in the show live um, and you can still access that content. And this week, um, so tomorrow at 10.30 a.m. Pacific time, we'll be having on um, a school called Learn Life um, from here in Barcelona that will be sharing a challenge based in social and emotional learning for the end of the school year that you can also participate in with your students and share um, with the hashtag on our social media channels. So tell us what's happening in Barcelona, Clara, in terms of lockdown. Uh, is it face-to-face? -face? Is it lockdown? What's happening in your part of the world? Yeah, so right now the state of alarm uh, was just uh, ended uh, two weeks ago. So we can now go out into the street. There's no more curfew. Um, the Sagrada Familia just opened. Um, so we were able to visit that last week. But I'm um, still, of course, wearing masks, um, being vigilant and eagerly awaiting the vaccine um, for many of us. So mm -hmm. it's slowly changing. School, uh, schools are face to face? Schools are mostly face-to-face, -face, yes, but at the Adobe offices, we will not be um, returning, I believe, this, this year. Mm. Right. There you go. All right, Clara, we're looking forward to your presentation. So we'll disappear from the stage and leave it over to you. Perfect. Well, I'll go ahead and share my screen here and go into um, presentation mode. But as I mentioned, we have um, some exciting summer professional development opportunities um, here on the Adobe Education team. Um, so first off, we will be having the Adobe Education Summit 2021 for our worldwide um, global audience. And although most of these sessions will be based in Eastern um, Standard Time, they will be recorded and on demand um, for educators to access at any time. So again, save the date um, for July 28th and 29th, and I'll share a little bit more information about what we have planned for this year's summit. Um, so taking a step back and, and uh, thinking about why we're having this summit and why we provide so many of the online and um, soon to be hopefully uh, in-person events that we do, um, is that we're really striving to connect and inspire educators in their journey to nurture the next generation of lifelong creators. And so all of the content that you'll see at our summit um, really focuses on three pillars. Um, so the first is we're trying to build this global professional learning community of educators and connect you. Um, so at times, as educators, it can be a bit isolating and that you are focusing on your students. You might not have as much time to observe what other teachers are doing or access those resources. 
So um, programs like this, like Inject Creativity Live, our summit, other events are really focused on connecting you to one another so that you can share uh, best practices and um, stay inspired in the work that you're doing. We also um, have a strong connection with product teams. So at the Education Summit, we will have um, product team members live that will be sharing what they're working on with different Adobe Creative Cloud apps and hear your feedback so that that can influence the product roadmap. Um, as you know, our, we have many products uh, within both Document Cloud and Creative Cloud that are focused on education. Um, and we really look to you to, to provide us that feedback of what's working, what can we build um, to better serve your unique group of students. And then last but not least, amplifying educator voices and stories. So at the summit itself, um, while we will have some Adobe Education uh, team members presenting at the beginning of the day, most of the sessions are from educators like yourselves. And we believe that um, it's really important to be amplifying their stories, their resources, uh, what's working, what's not working, um, because you all are the practitioners and you are the experts. And so we want to really elevate your voices um, to inspire one another. And so for the Adobe Education Summit um, itself, uh, we have the pre-conference, which will be July 27th, for Adobe Education Leaders only um, to present. And then we're also inviting digital media educators. So these sessions on July 27th will go really in-depth into Creative Cloud. Presenters are Creative Cloud experts and we'll be going through more um, advanced workflows um, for educators who might be teaching graphic design or, or videography or game design. Um, and then the general summit is July 28th through 29th, which will be a broad uh, range of, of educators. So in this, we invite educators who might be familiar with Spark or have, you know, just started using Spark for the first time and might be teaching English or science or math um, and want to learn more about Adobe tools. So they can select sessions during that 28th and 29th uh, conference that are more applicable to their uh, level of expertise in Creative Cloud and their level of interest. And then we also have a specific track on the 28th of July that's for IT admins. So if you have an administrator at your school who is responsible for deploying Creative Cloud, um, we have specific tracks led by uh, Dan Armstrong and team who will be walking through um, some of those deployment processes. So again, make sure to save the date. Again, the pre-conference is just for Adobe Education Leaders to present and digital media educators who are interested in joining. Um, to watch the presentations. And then the main conference is uh, July 28th and 29th. Um, I'll be sharing some more um, information as we get that all up on our landing page. Um, but just know we'll be having some fun after party events. Uh, we even have a DJ coming back that joined us last year. Um, but we had a huge success with over 5,000 educators joining for last year was our first uh, global uh, virtual summit. Um, and we're hoping to have um, quite a bit of engagement again this year. And, Tara, um, that's wonderful. Keep yeah. going. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then for some of our uh, featured speakers, uh, we have Dr. I. Addison Zhang, um, who will be joining us um, from the East Coast in the US, alongside Nicholas Ferroni, who's also a high school teacher um, in New Jersey. And they're both incredible educators. Um, Dr. I, you might be familiar with her work uh, virtually, but she has um, a project called Classroom Without Walls, and she'll be sharing some of the digital skills um, needed for the future workforce and what she's been seeing in higher education. While Nicholas Ferroni will be sharing uh, more on the secondary side as he teaches high school students uh, history and how creativity is important uh, across the curriculum. We also have Levent Erdogan, who is uh, joining us from Hong Kong, um, and he has a background in uh, video production and then became an educator at international schools. Um, we also have David Hotler, who is on the HyperDocs team, if those of you are familiar with the Google HyperDocs team, um, and he's joining us from Madrid in Spain. 
Al Thomas, who's joining us from Austin, Texas, um, a well-known speaker in the U.S. and also uh, an Adobe education leader. And Georgina Dean, uh, who's joining us from Jordan in the Middle East and um, very active on social. You've seen a lot of her live streams and sketch noting um, and is also an Adobe education leader. Wow. <laughs> uh, be sure to register now. Um, the pre-conference is so if you want to register for the digital media pre-conference with Adobe Education Leaders and the main summit, you can go to adobe.ly slash edu summit AEL. And we'll post that in the chat so you can um, be sure to learn more and register. That's wonderful. Thank you, Clara. So let's just make sure we read that out again or we'll just bring mm -hmm. that. Keep it up there, keep it up there, keep it up there. Back to presentation mode. <laughs> That's so it's adobe.ly slash edu summit AEL. And I'm going to do a little screen grab of that too to make sure that we keep promoting yep. at all of our inject creativity events leading up to that event because it's going to be awesome. Clara, thank you so much for your time. Uh, was there anything else you wanted to share with us? No, that um, was it. And I'm just looking at the comments here too. And we'll be sharing this um, on our live stream show as well. So I'm um, looking forward to seeing you later this summer. And we'll just make Fantastic. sure there's a distinction between the global summit, which is what you've been talking about, and the yep. APEC summit, which is happening later in the year, which we launched on this show in our last episode. Yes. It's called summits because that's exactly what they are. But uh, this one's looking amazing. How many people are you expecting, you reckon, Clara? What's your... What, what yeah. are you anticipating? So last year we had um, a little over 5,000 educators. So we're hoping for um, that amount this year and, and maybe even more. So let's see. Um, definitely invite your colleagues to join us um, if they're interested. And um, I'll be sending over to the team all the other registration links. If you're an IT admin or you just want to join the main summit, um, you can see all those different reg links. Excellent. Well, if you'd like to chat Amazing. with Clara, she will be hanging around briefly at our fireside chat following this episode via bluejeans.com slash kitchen.adobe, and you'll be able to have an almost private conversation with her, except we'll all be listening in as <laughs> well. Clara, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. We hope you're enjoying this episode of Inject Creativity Live with Tim Kitchen and Erin Raithke. Thanks, Rob. Erin, tell us about the Get to Know Your Adobe Apps webinar series. Led by Adobe Education Leaders, Adobe Solution Consultants and Dr. Kitchen, the Get to Know Your Adobe Apps webinar series now features recordings of some outstanding presentations that are well worth sharing with your colleagues. We have completed all three sessions for middle school K-12 teachers, for senior secondary teachers, as well as for higher education educators. You can access and share the recordings at bit.ly forward slash adobe dash webinars to one. Hi folks, we are about to be inspired by an AEL, an Adobe education leader. AELs are passionate about the use of Adobe tools to inspire creative learning and teaching experiences in the delivery of either primary, secondary or post-secondary curricula. The first step to becoming an AEL is to be an ACE, an Adobe Creative Educator, via edX.adobe.com slash adobe-creative-educator. You don't have to be an Adobe expert to be an ACE, just a teacher interested in engaging students through creative digital learning experiences. The ACE program is a free international micro-credentialing program. It only takes a few hours to earn your level one badge and the focus is on creativity rather than Adobe. Please share this program with your colleagues and get involved. Who knows, you may one day also become an Adobe education leader. Speaking of Adobe education leaders, it is a delight to welcome Adobe Education Leader, Dr. Max Sleasier, uh, to this show. Over to you, Max. Hey, um, just checking my times here. Yeah, thanks. It's really great that I can um, uh, present today on uh, a project that we run um, at Swinburne University, which is called um, Today is Tomorrow. And we're really interested to work together with some colleagues from uh, Creative Writing, Julia, and from 
animation with uh, Darren and Steven. And we, we were thinking about like very much in sort of industry context. And because when you've got your students and your discipline, yes, of course, we do great work. And but when they actually go out in the industry, then normally they are working with students, or sorry, professionals from other different industries. And so we wanted to mimic this for our students. And so we said, let's try to create some workflows, how we can have creative writers that inspire, that are writing uh, fantastic um, short stories, that then inspire some illustrators and animators to create some short animations, and then take this to my class, which is digital narratives, where we create them. Um, we think about storytelling and really, at the moment, look at the you know, innovation and storytelling, so AR and VR. And so I was really interested to explore Adobe Aero. And so I'll just show you today as the very simple step-by-step -step guide how to create a, a very easy um, AI experience. And so this is very much the idea of um, today is tomorrow, the project where you can see the different illustrations that we had. And of course, you can make these sort of things um, a bit interactive. That means they can start playing, they can spin around, they can play music, and it's a great way for storytelling because now we're not limited, limited anymore to, um, you know, our screen as a canvas, but we can take stories anywhere. And then the same assets, the same content, we've been using to also integrate them into some 360 videos. And that's sort of very much today the, um, the process that I wanted to show you. So um, again, the same project that I was showing to students, at the end of the class today, I will show you one AR, sorry, at the end of the session, I'll show you one AR project that some of my students created, um, not for today's tomorrow project, for another project, which is like really amazing. And we just started 12 weeks ago with the sort of same tutorial that I'm giving you now, the same step-by-step -step guide in a way. And some of the students, and in the end, we also created um, some illustrations and then a showreel. And the output of an AR, in a way, is you have a QR code. So you can take this QR code, scan it, and Adobe Aero is available for iPhone and um, some uh, Android devices. But if you don't have an Android device and it's not working, there's also the beta version for the desktop version out there. And that looks exactly the same. So it's a really fantastic way that you can work um, you know, cross-platform. And then the same asset that you can see, we also take that in a 360 video. And that was for us to really think about how we can, yeah, create some new experiences in storytelling, so to say. And okay, so let me get started um, with Adobe Aero. When we work with AR, the first thing we actually do is we go back to Photoshop, and that's a, the the way to start. So um, on some of these sort of Adobe um, resource sites, it says that seven layers are recommended. Um, but I think you can, you know, explore and do more as well. But maybe if you start, just keep it, um, you know, simple in a way and have a, a nice, easy overview. And so there's one thing or two things which are kind of important to remember. And so what we can see here is that's uh, the, from my colleague um, Darren. He created these illustrations. He was inspired by Julia's um, uh, short story that she wrote, which is called "Today Is Tomorrow." And so now this short story can go anywhere into the world in a way. And so, of course, with AR, I think the best thing is when you've got a transparent background. So when you create a new um, you know, uh, Photoshop project, the thing to remember is that your background is transparent, right? The, the, the dimensions, um, you know, how you set it up, that really depends on what, what the project is about. So there's no right or wrong. If you are starting, you might be able to use maybe you know, a project that isn't maybe not too big. So you can think about any of these presets. Of course, you want to keep it at 72 resolution. You don't need to have the files be big. So it's back in the days, like creating websites. Things should be kind of small, you know, because they go sort of online through the Creative Cloud. And yeah, so that's what I've done here. It's a transparent background and the images work best if they're in individual layers, okay? So that's like the idea that we arrange our storytelling components that you want to then have in the AR experience. What you can create, of course, is you can also add some music or voiceover. And again, that would be like an MP3 file, um, because MP3 is smaller than a WAV file. And so once you've got your assets ready, 
all what we need to do is we need to go file and make sure we save this project. So we save it on our computer. So I'll just um, save it uh, here as a PSD file. Wednesday. Yeah, that's all good. And now the magic happens, which I think is really fantastic. We go to file, export, and we go to export for arrow. So now this says um, uh, this Photoshop to eight, contains eight layers. Yes. So I don't want to flatten them because I like to have this different uh, dimensions that you can like you know really expand that you can almost look through the um, the Photoshop layers so that you sort of you know with a phone can browse through them. So that's why we say preserve the layers. That's exporting this now, and that's where now the Creative Cloud comes in. So when you've got installed the Creative Cloud on your computer, so you can see I'm working on a Mac, it becomes like a you know a folder, and you can then tell um, you know where to save it in the Creative Cloud. So I created um, here my inject creativity file, give it the same name, and you just save this now into the Creative Cloud. So the file is converting to see the file in AR augmented reality. Use Aero mobile app and import it into your scene. So let's do that. Okay, and of course, you know, how you set up your story elements or how you set up different pictures, you know, what I like to say to my students is the only limitation is your imagination, right? So you can have pictures, graphics, you know, whatever way you construct them. And then you can have music that goes with this, or you can have a voiceover and that, that's really what you need. So what I've done here is I've um, sorry, I've mirrored my phone. So if you've seen this presentation already, and so this is very much the um, Adobe Aero interface on the phone. So you can see I've got some you know of my recent projects in here. And all you need to do really is when you to get started is you punch the plus sign at the bottom right. And that will now find some surfaces. So it's a bit dark in here, but that should still work. So, okay. So now that means I've anchored where my AR experience should go. And so what I need to do now is just press the plus sign. And then you can see at the bottom, I've got my creative cloud. So, what I want to do is now is I want to import that PSD file from my Creative Cloud. So let's just do that. Clip here. Ooh. There it is at the top my inject creativity file. And I called it um, today's tomorrow, Wednesday one. That gives me a quick preview. And yep, yeah, that's perfect. So that's the one that I want. So I open this now. So now I've you know cleaned up my desk just for the seminar. It's also not great that it's a glass desk, but then if you like have a book or some you know surface that works really well, a desk would be great. So now I've placed this onto my um, my, my desk here. So now if I select it, I've got this PSD file and what I created in uh, in Photoshop, and you see there at the bottom. I've got my layers and my behaviors. These are the two things to get you started with. And if I press on my layers, my favorite one is the Z offset. So now that makes it sort of three dimensional. And that means I can really, <coughs> sorry, jump through that AI experience. And so there's no right or wrong with these things. They're just you know playing a bit around with them until you come to a, a position where you think that is really nice and that works fine for you. So yeah, that looks great. Um, and that means I can then you know, sorry, I've got the cable, so I'm not as mobile as I want it to be. But um, so do the mirroring for the computer. But now I don't want to have it static. I just give you one example, which is a spin. Okay, so what we then do is we go to uh, the little man, which is the behaviors, and it says trigger. So 
on me tapping it, I want the action. And you know, you can see there's heaps of different options. I just go for the spin. You know, it was never very good in math, but now with Adobe, I understand how X, Y, and that all relates. So yeah, my Y axis, that's very good. And duration, two seconds, would be very quick. So let's maybe just say I want 11 seconds. And yeah, easy is in. That's great, of course. So it starts slowly and then, you know, picks up. Um, Just once is fine. We don't need any delay. And that's all good. So we attach this. The other thing that I think would be great is to have a bit of um, music, right? So I go trigger on tap. I go for the action. And then I say play audio. And so now I need to find the clip. So we say at the bottom it says audio clip none. And there's a folder next to it. So let's go to that folder. We go again to the Creative Cloud, and here in my Inject Creativity, I've saved an MP3. So we'll open this. So, and you can see now it changed at audio clip to uh, use this one. Um, yeah, that's all good. And now it's time to do a preview. So if I punch preview, let me move my cap out of the way. Oops, sorry. If I now press, you won't hear the sound because I've got my headphones on. Um, but you can see that starts spinning now. And it will play also the music. So, and I think the way we could use this for this particular project is that you have it as an, you know, you know, for instance, in a gallery exhibition, or when you have it as a 360 video, this is one of the elements that brings these assets to the world. If I want to share it now, I press on the top right, and I press share a link, and I need to give it a name. Jack. And um, if you wanted to change the image, you could do that as well. And now let's create a link. I'm just checking my time to make sure I also get to the 360 video. Yeah, but I will do that. Um, okay, inject creativity is done. And then all I need to do really is to punch on my QR code. And here's my QR code that I've now created that AR experience. So share the content, send it to my desktop. OK, let's just see that I've got it here. There it is. So now you could use your smartphone, just open the camera, um, hover over it, and that will then, if you haven't installed an arrow, ask it to download the arrow, and there you go. So that was now uh, okay, 14 minutes to create an AR experience, which I think is pretty amazing. So I've tried AR for a long time to get my head around this, and I've tried all these different other softwares and tools, and then they disappear again, but now it's all integrated coming from Photoshop. So if you get Photoshop skills, you can create the story components in the way that you want to have them. You create a short voiceover or a little bit of music and bring this then into the AR um, experience. OK, so I said um, I'd also very briefly show you a bit about Premiere Pro and then jumping into VR. And so 360 videos, um, which is normally, um, actually, let me show you an example. Um, that is a very proud teacher post. Um, some of my students, they created a project last year where we worked with Midibank as a partnership. And uh, they wanted for us to create a project. We're just coming out of the um, lockdown. If you feel a bit stressed and if you don't really like, you know, want to reconnect with the world, so to say, um, 
we thought 360 could be a really great way to create some mindfulness videos. And so students used um, some 360 video cameras to create these uh, mindfulness videos. And um, yeah, so it's now being part of a um, national campaign uh, from Medibank. So I was really proud for my students that you know they um, you know were really successful with their project. And so even if you don't have a 360 camera, I just wanted to show you uh, a couple of tips and tricks how you can work with this. So I've got five minutes, so that's easy, no worries. So I start sort of almost like an animation. I start with the end, okay? And then I show you from the beginning how we get there. So when you are in your um, uh, premiere, you know, you know the normal layout. And the trick to work with 360 videos or with VR is you right click and then you select VR and press enable. And that way, you get a you know a 360 um, sphere. So, but like in this case, let's say I don't have a 360 camera, so I could just import some you know 16 by 19 uh, you know normal <laughs> videos. And so, if I import the video, so I just um, drag and drop this in here in my timeline. You can see that the video is kind of skewed, right? Because, of course, the 360 is a sphere, and you put then a flat image onto the sphere, onto the sphere, so that bends it. And there's a trick, the effects in immersive video. So just punch immersive video in the search window, and you will get the plane to sphere effect. And then you just drag and drop this, and this will, anyway, Straighten out your image so that you can work it in a 360 environment. So, and of course, when you export this video now, that means when you put the 360 video on YouTube or um, uh, Vimeo, you can, of course, uh, watch it or you can watch it with your phone, you can browse around, or you can watch it with a headset, so an Oculus, HTC Vive, or um, Oculus Go, or even Google Cardboard. I think that's, you know, better than no VR experience. And, you know, that sort of it's a way that you can create some uh, VR content in a way. So how do I get there? What you would normally do is, in the start of a project, is you go File, New, Sequence, and you just choose from the presets a monoscopic. So stereoscopic is 360 3D. Just keep it simple and go for monoscopic. Normally, when you import a video into Premiere Pro, your camera would know, um, you know what the Settings are, but no, we just go for these ones. Ambisonics means spatial audio. So you can also just go for stereo to keep it easy. You press OK. And then when you go to your um, effects, sorry, your media browser, your project, and you import your videos, you don't want to change the sequence settings. So you keep the existing settings. And now if I layer my, sorry. My 360 videos on top of the so you would see that this is all skewed. So again, I have to go back to my effects and go to my immersive video and go to the plane to sphere effect. And then I just drag and drop this onto my files and my videos as you would attach any other effect. And then you can treat the video like you would treat a normal video. And don't worry, it looks sort of skewed here, but that's just the preview. And then you can, you know, space them out in your effect controls. Top, and I can uh, move them in my sphere. And then, if you right click again, oh, there's also a shortcut. If you do that a lot of times, you just press on the plus, and then you get your toggle VR display video, that sort of thingy. And that just does it for you. Right, but <laughs> I like right click, say. So, and there we go. So, you could create a 360 
video. Just a campus. Can't go there. That's uh, my favorite spot on the weekend. Can't go there. Just down the road. Can't go there. <laughs> but that's the very thing. You're breaking you my heart, me, Max. <laughs> if you give me, um, just because John said it, if you give me one second, is that okay? Yep. I'll just go show for you it, one man. thing. Um, so go back to this one and you do um, the export frame, a still image, and you go to um, just call this um, inject creativity. Just save it on the desktop. Very bad file management because they're rushed. There's one thing that I noticed the other day. Um, I'm in love with Photoshop again. In Photoshop, if I just open my file, which one was it? Um, desktop. This one. So just make sure you've unselected this one. You get your layer selected. And then if you go to 3D, panoramic sphere, new panorama from selected layer, you can also have a 360 preview in Photoshop. Okay, it's going funny now, but yeah, trust me, that works. So what you can then do is you can work with Photoshop um, in the same way that you would sort of normally do. If you keep the layer more into the center piece, so if I just click back onto the spherical map, it will show you the video. So where you see where the images are, if you would then treat these images or want to put some text in or any type of graphics things, that isn't too skewed. If you move to the top or to the bottom, then it gets kind of skewed. You just save it as a PSD layer and bring it back into Premiere Pro. And that is a quick fire intro into XR Extended Reality, first with Adobe Aero and then with Premiere Pro working with VR. I wanted to have all these resources ready on my Adobe Education Exchange so I could show it to you, but um, We've got multiple people working with the internet at home today, and um, my upload speed didn't allow me to do anything like that. So I was lucky that, you know, um, everyone has been behaving, not watching too much YouTube or Netflix, so I could, you know, go through this live stream easy. Well, Max, when you do get those resources up, make sure you send us the link and we'll add it to this recording so that people can get access. Max, thank you so much for preparing and for the time you put into putting that together, it was very, very much appreciated. Well done. You're watching Inject Creativity Live with Tim Kitchen and Aaron Raithke. We have over 20,000 teachers who have enrolled in at least level one of the Adobe Creative Educator program. Please do promote this program with your colleagues via adobe.ly slash ACE. The focus is not on Adobe skills, but understanding the importance of creativity in education. If you'd like to be guided through level one, Dr. Kitchen is running the next Be a Creative Educator course on Tuesday the 15th of June, 4 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. and again on Wednesday the 7th of July, 10.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time, which is a holiday period for most Aussie states. More information can be found at bit.ly forward slash adobe dash edu dash creative. We hope you're enjoying this episode of Inject Creativity Live with Tim Kitchen and Erin Raithke. Next Tuesday, the 8th of June, was to be Adobe's first face-to-face -face professional learning event for many months at John Paul <laughs> College in Frankston. Unfortunately, due to the current Victorian lockdown, we have to convert this event to an online session. The good news is that more teachers can now be involved. So Adobe Educational Leaders Michelle Dennis and Justin DeLacy, as well as Dr. T. Kitchen, will be running workshops. Find out more and register via bit.ly slash adobe jpc21 and share this event with your colleagues and wider education networks. The workshop options will be Adobe Aero, Adobe Spark and Premiere Rush. So this is a great opportunity to hear from out, some outstanding Adobe education leaders. So get involved. And I know that Michelle Dennis is working really hard on her Adobe Aero workshop and she'd be really keen to share it with you. Mm. I'm not sure if it'll be as good as yours, Max. But I'm sure it'll be... It'll not be, a competition. Be, <laughs> You're watching Inject Creativity Live with Tim Kitchen and Erin Raithke. The 2021 APAC Adobe Education Summit, the APAC 
Adobe Education Summit as opposed to the global Adobe Education Summit is being held as an online event on Wednesday, the 29th of September. This event is open to any educator in any sector, level and curriculum area. It's going to be a wonderful event involving presentations and news from the global Adobe Education team, including Clara, creative catalyst talks and inspiration from local Adobe Education leaders and lots more. It's a free event and you can register your interest to be involved at bit.ly forward slash adobe dash edu dash summit dash two one. Please share this link with your colleagues and your wider education networks and keep that day free. It's a school holiday period for most of you. If you're a member of the Adobe Education Leader community, there is a special day just for you the day prior on Tuesday, the 28th of September. And if you're an Adobe Creative Educator or have at least enrolled in level one of the ACE program, there's a Creative Challenge Day for you and the AELs on Thursday, the 30th of September. More information about these extra days will be sent directly to you. Register now for the summit and we'll provide more details about the agenda in future episodes of this show. We're going to bring Clara back up to the screen. Where's Clara? Where is she? Where's she got? There she is. There she is. Oh. Hey, <laughs> and Clara, you're going to actually be closing day one and day two of the summit because it'll be your morning time. And uh, we're yeah, looking forward to having that global connection. Thank you very much for being part of that. And for getting up so early to do it. Yeah, and I'm looking forward to seeing everybody live. I'm really pumped. I haven't been back to Australia, to our Sydney office in a while. So um, hope that I can come in person um, someday soon. But in the meantime, looking forward to seeing everyone virtually. Well, it was three years ago, uh, 2019, or just under three years ago, when you were in the Sydney office for our summit, when it was a face-to-face -face event. And what we will do, Clara, probably in our next episode of Inject Creativity Live is play a little bit of that just to get people into the mood of what the summit is all about. Because this is, even though it's an online event, we're hoping to actually have some people face-to-face -face in Sydney if we're allowed to. We can have up to 50 at this stage. It might even be more by then. And so it'll just give that an extra feel of having a live audience, which would be wonderful. Mm -hmm. Terrific. And Erin, you're going to be involved, aren't you? Yes, I am. So, um, yeah, we're, we're currently um, doing some like little meetings, some brainstorming, some fantastic ideas that we can put out there to the community. And, yes, I'm excited to see what shakes loose as far as presenters and activities and some of the fabulous workshops I'm sure some of our creators will come up with. We're even looking at doing an Inject Creativity Live type show to top and tail that particular day. So it's going to be really exciting what we've got planned and we hope yeah. that you guys can all be involved. All right, let's hear from Rob the Robot again for the last time. We hope you're enjoying this episode of Inject Creativity Live with Tim Kitchen and Erin Raifke. Well, almost the last time. I think he's going to have one more appearance. If you're on Facebook and you're not allowed to, oh, sorry, not allowed, if you're not already a member of the Australasian Adobe Education Community Facebook group, please join via facebook.com slash groups slash A-U-S-A-E-L. This is a great way to keep regularly involved with the Adobe in education and the wider community. Erin, I'm actually looking forward to our next Inject Creativity Live event, which will be held on Wednesday the 16th of June at 6.30pm Australian Eastern Standard Time. In that episode, our AEL presenter will be Adobe Education Leader Craig Dalmeyer Power from TAFE New South Wales, who will be focusing on innovation and creativity in the classroom using Adobe XD. And our thought leader for the next episode is Adobe Education Leader Stephen Colbert from Melbourne. For those watching the recording of this episode, join us live if you can in the future. It's always much more fun and interactive when you're live. For those live, get ready to move over to bluejeans.com forward slash kitchen dot adobe for our fireside chat and we'll see you in two weeks time. All the best. See you, folks. Well, folks, thank you so much for watching this episode of Inject Creativity Live. 
For those who are watching live, join us via bluejeans.com slash kitchen.adobe for an informal, non-recorded fireside chat to meet and interact with our presenters, as well as complete the feedback form and apply for a professional development certificate. If you are not watching this live, join us live next time. Use this QR code or link to find out more about dates and topics. On behalf of Dr. Kitchen and Erin Rathke, don't forget to keep being creative.